So you want to know what it's like to do 30 to 40 hits of acid. I'll try to explain that to you. There's some things that just can't be explained. You know, there's certain things that the English language just cannot convey. Certain feelings and places. <clears throat> and when you do 30 hits of acid, you go to that place. <laughs> you go to that place for a long time. And... I can describe some of the physical effects and some of the feelings, but for the most part, it just can't be described. It just is. You know, other people who've done acid know what I'm talking about. But I will describe the physical effects to the best of my, my ability. Um, so this arose out of, I guess, necessity? I had bought a vial about a month and a half earlier, and me and a buddy had gone through... Um, most of that vial. Chad, I love you, bro. So, um, I had been dosing, um, probably once or twice a week, um, for, you know, a couple months at this point. I was, I was learning a lot about myself and this new spiritual connection I had, you, you know, universal, uh, the oneness, you know, we're all one. That was... One of my favorite quotes is by Carl Sagan. We are the ex universe experience in itself for a while. And when I do acid, I truly, I truly feel that, that oneness, that being part of everything and it being a part of me. And every time I take an acid trip, you know, I come out more humane, more loving. You know, try not to, try not to, that's what I'm saying. Try to go into an acid trip and not come back a better person. You know, like if you could do that, I'm. I truly feel sorry for you. Um, so the need came with this vial. I have thirty to forty hits left, and I have to go to my great grandfather's funeral in um, about four or five days. And then two days after that, I have to go to jail for 30 days. I used to be a heroin addict, and I was taking care of some old charges that had come up before I got clean um, about a year and a half ago. So I had to go do 30 days in jail as they revoked my probation, which is fine. You know, I'm being clean. I'm doing good. You know, I just do acid. Um, you know, heroin's just terrible shit, terrible shit. Uh, so I got this 30 to 40 hits sitting around, and I don't want to leave it at my house this entire month. I'm in jail. Um, I don't want the cat or my grandma to get into it. You know, she's liable to <laughs> do it. Um, that'd be great. Granny running down the street naked. Oof. Um, so I have a video of me actually taking this... 30 to 40 hits, and I say 30 to 40 because I don't know exactly how much it was. I know it was at the very least 30. That was, I stopped counting at, you know, 25 or so when I was trying to figure out how much it was and uh, put it all back in the vial. I didn't have enough room to store anymore. I know there was at least 5 hits left, and it could have been even up to 15. So it could have been 30 to 45 hits I'm dosing up here. Uh, you know, I always just say 30 because it's on the low end, and I'm not trying to say I did more than I did. Like, it just is. It was 30 hits at the very least. 3,000 micrograms. Now, I have heard that the epicenter of acid is 1,300 to 1,600 micrograms. Um, and when I say epicenter, I mean, like, that is as high as you can get. Anything more than that, and you're just extending it out. For a long fucking time. And I'm cool with that. You know, I was I was absolutely down with that. I had a couple of days before I had to go to California for the funeral. So I was just getting in there. You know, fuck it. <clears throat> so dosing, dosing the acid was interesting in itself. In that I was pulling entire droppers full and just dumping it in my mouth. And, uh. I tried to keep it in there as long as possible, but it's alcohol based, so it was it was disgusting and it was kind of burning, and so I ended up swallowing it, like a lot of it. But there was enough to coat the entire inside of my mouth anyway, so it made no fucking difference. 
And what was interesting is that almost the minute I put my vial down, I was already getting waves. It was seriously like five minutes later, and I was already starting to get some very, you know, almost imperceptible waves. Fifteen minutes later, it was essentially like I was peeking on maybe a hit or two. You know, there was just a just a little bit of flashing and waving going on, and, you know, I was really enjoying it. <clears throat> And it was coming on, it was coming on quick. I mean, every five, ten minutes, there was a very, very noticeable difference in how hard I was frying. Things started waving and flashing, and an hour into it, I was laying on my bed, and I was looking at the ceiling. And it's like I'm peeking on seven or eight hits, and I'm just an hour into this thing, if that. It might have been 45 minutes. And I remember thinking... You know, I'm laying in my bed staring at my ceiling. If I puke right now, I'm going to die. I will choke on my vomit and I might die. But I was okay with that. <laughs> you know, I was content. I was, <laughs> life is good. I'm getting it, bro. And uh, so I picked myself up out of the bed and went and sat in my recliner a few times. Um, I was genu genuinely worried about, you know, vomiting on my own puke. Um, I wasn't I wasn't sure if that was possible or not. I wasn't I wasn't quite sure if I was going to be that far gone um when I got up there. I never did get that far gone, but there were times where I completely forgot who I was. Um it was probably three or four times I had to work myself backwards. Um I completely forgot who I was, what I was doing, where I was at. And so I would start thinking about what did I do yesterday, what am I doing tomorrow. So I'm not, I have to start thinking about who my friends were, you know. I go, I got, I got Chad and I got Mandy and Michelle. Um, you know, Carol's my mother. Oh shit, I'm Tim. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro, we got it figured out. Okay, my name's Tim. And got it. And then you know, I get back into the music and lose it. And uh, later on, it pop up again. Oh fuck, who the fuck am I? <laughs> And I love that. I love that dissolution of self. Because, you know, when you're not, when you don't have an ego, like you're one with everything. And that's what I, I just, I just like being there. I can't describe it as, it's that thing. It's that thing that you can't describe. But I can describe, like, the, um, I can describe what my senses were going through to some degree. Um, clearly, my hands were pouring, so I was a fucking puddle. I was a goddamn puddle. I was drinking so much water and pissing so much. But what was crazy is that when I started peaking on um, this 30 to 40 hits, I would move my head forward, and it would take, you know, about a second or two for everything to catch up. And I'd lean my head back, and it would take a second or two for everything to catch back up. So, as you're walking around, you are not where you, like, appear to be. You're not where you think you are. Like, it's literally, there's a, a delay on um, your visual um, stimuli. And when it came to audio, there was a you know, constant reverberation. And for me, like, music sets the trip. Like, I have to have music going. Um, otherwise, like, you know, I, I just I just don't enjoy it as much. Um, music really, really is the ticket for me. Um, a lot of times I like to get up and I'll go walk around on the come up um, just to kill that anxiety. But doing this... 30, 40 hits, I wasn't, I wasn't going nowhere, like, there, there was, there was no walking around, it was essentially, just go, lay down, get in bed, turn some music on, and stare at the fucking ceiling, because there's no, you know, you don't have the wherewithal to even walk around, to even get your goddamn shoes, get them on, and get out the door, and, you know, that's, that's something I usually love to do, um, doing 30 hits, you're not, uh, you're not going to come down in 12 hours and go to sleep. It's, this is a two and a half or day, day ordeal. Like, there's no, there's no stopping. I was peaking for probably 16 hours. Um, and like I said, I was high for 
two, two and a half days, something like that, I kind of lost track, and you know, you get, you get so far into it, you start getting hungry, and you're trying to make food, and you can't see a goddamn thing, like, is the water boiling or not, I can't tell, I can't tell, I was trying to, I was trying to make macaroni and cheese or something, I had no idea whether the fucking water was boiling or not, <laughs> it was great, and so, I mean, that, that, that's essentially it. Like, the rest of it just can't be described. You can't describe that. You know, the delay, the audio reverberation. You know, did I hear that? Did I not hear that? It's all normal acid shit. Um, the part that I can describe um, is the after effects. If you are planning to do 30 or 40 hits of acid... Um, you know, you got to take into account that there's going to be some permanent damage. <laughs> damage. I love it. Um, now, the reason I felt like safe doing 30 hits is that I don't think it's a fatal dose until you hit 10,000 micrograms, which is an entire vial. It's 100 hits. Um, that's what I've read. I don't know the validity to that, but I know that... Um, Back in the day, people used to do thumbprints, where you have um, crystallized LSD, and they would put their thumb in it, and then put that on their tongue, and I know average, a thumbprint goes between 5 and 8,000 micrograms, 4 and 8,000 micrograms, I don't remember the exact numbers, but it's a lot of fucking acid, and I wanted to do that, I wanted to experience that, and, uh, and that's what that's that was another reason I decided to do all this at once. I just wanted to say I've been able to do it. So the physical damage that has come with doing that much acid is that um, visually I have a hard time adjusting to contrast um, between light and dark, and that's that's a pretty normal acid thing. But it's, it's I mean it still happens. It's been fucking. Uh, did that in June, July, August, September, October. It's been four months, and I'm still having, you know, visual um, changes, aspects. So when I look at a light, uh, to this day, I'll look at a light, and I get a big old halo around it, and these rainbow-colored streamers coming off. Um, Especially when it's dark outside and I'm looking at it. Um, that's where I really get the halos when it's dark outside. When there's one light and you have the contrast between light and dark. Um, it becomes a problem sometimes when I am driving. Um, when a car passes by, I'm blind for a couple seconds sometimes. You know, I can see enough, but there's a big old... And it could be because I'm staring at the fucking light. Because it's, yeah, I mean, it's fucking pretty. You know, I just didn't like to stare at that motherfucker as I'm driving. Um... Signs can be an issue sometimes, um, really bright, like, white signs when it's reflecting the light, um, sometimes I can't even read the goddamn thing, you know, I have to, I have to focus just to the side of it a little bit and read it with the peripheral, because I can't look at it directly, it's just too bright, too much contrast. Um, the other thing is, is, um, to this day, if I'm drinking coffee or my blood pressure goes up a little bit, if I start staring at something patterned, um, textured ceilings, carpets, leaves on the ground, pavement, eh, fuck, it don't matter. Um, I'll start to get things moving and waving just a little bit. Um, it's barely perceptible, but, yeah, I mean, it's there, you know. If I, if I zone out too long, you know, looking at something at a distance, it looks like there's all hot, you know, and things, uh, the air heats up and it looks kind of like it's moving a little bit. Um, my depth perception gets fucked. My depth perception is fucked. It's probably going to be like that for a while. When I close my eyes, when it first started, when, when I first got sobered up, for about a month afterwards I could close my eyes and I could see the the waves in and out. And I could even see it in different colors. There was violets and some blues, and it went down to, like, a light blue. Now, I barely get some real dark violet colors. Um, there's no more blues or anything in there. And it only happens when my blood pressure goes up. Um, if I smoke weed, 
it's like I get a nice little <laughs> mini trip out of it. Uh, the ceiling carpets they really get to they really get to wave and I love it. Like I said, it's like a free little mini trip. When I do so, I've done acid once. Um, since then, I just haven't had just haven't had the time. I uh, <clears throat> I had a relapse with heroin. It was it was pretty bad. I'm just pulling myself up out of that. But um, I know I didn't do that much acid, and it, it was like I had taken five or six hits. Um, so I I know that shit is like uh, it, it fucked with my brain. And, um, like I said, I, I've noticed it's dulled down a little bit. Um, I need to do some more and get that motherfucker back up there, because I love it. I love it. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's, I know it's kind of anticlimactic, but, uh, if, if you are planning on doing a thumbprint, 30, 40 hits, whatever, I mean, you need to be prepared for having some permanent damage, it will be there, and it, I, I suppose it could be scary, you know, it might be a little frustrating sometimes, it does get frustrating, like I archery hunt, and so every once in a while, if I get to, if I get to zone in too hard, you know, it's, 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 a. Uh, it can get hard to hit the target, you gotta really concentrate, and you gotta be moving your eyes to, keep everything um, from getting all wavy and fucked up, you know, you got to keep everything sharp and in focus, and that, that can be hard to do sometimes, I think it's a small price to pay, I will absolutely, I will absolutely be doing that again, and hopefully, you know, we get some more, hopefully I'll get some more permanent damage, <laughs> I love that shit. Oh, so, yeah, I mean, I reckon if if you want to do, if you want to do 30 or 40 hits, I would say, you know, go for it if you, if you know you can handle it. Um, set and setting is everything, though, you know, don't be doing 30, 40 hits if you're going to be walking around town, because you're not going to be able to function, I guarantee you that right now. So, you know, only, only do it if you... If you really think that you can, I mean, otherwise, just just do a big dose. I mean, it's all the same. Like I said, after a certain point, you're you're as high as you're gonna get. And then you're just extending it out. So, you know, if you got nothing to do for a couple of days and you want to get in there, fuck it, bro, get in there. It's uh, it's great. I wish. I know, I know this video is so anticlimactic, but I really wish I could just describe being in that place. You know, you just, you can't. It's a spiritual thing. When you're in that place, it's, uh, you know, money no longer matters. Sex no longer matters. These things that drive the world no longer fucking matter. You are one with the universe. You're one with yourself. And you realize that. You go to a different place sometimes, you know. It's, uh... It's beautiful. So, if you if you want to do it, I would say go for it. If you think you can handle it, I've seen a couple people that just couldn't. You know, they get they get angry, they they lose their minds a little bit. You know, I I had a buddy go banging on the windows at Seven Eleven saying we could do whatever the fuck we want, and he fucking lost his fucking mind. I had another buddy who kept crying. Um, cried three or four times during the night he ended up picking a log up real sharp and he'd look at the point of it and he'd look at my face and look at the point of it and he'd look at my face and I knew he was thinking about jamming that motherfucker in my face so I was sitting there like, I love you bro you know I love you and, you know what's going on he throws the log in the fire I said god damn bro I thought you were gonna stab me with that fucker he goes oh so you were admiring how much of a weapon it is as I was huh oh <laughs> what you know God damn it. And so, you know, I'm very I'm very picky with who I do acid with and I try not to I try not to push it on people. It's like if you are comfortable with yourself and you're good and you're kind, you know, and you just um you just you got no shit going on in your life, like, you know, yeah, acid is great. It is a great tool to help with depression. And like I said, it helped me find spirituality and everything else but if you're in a bad place in life or you are 
this is not full and bitter. Like, don't be, don't be doing acid, man. You know, you lose your goddamn mind, you give it a bad name for everybody else. Like, this is a great tool. This is a great drug. I've been addicted to heroin. I've tried all them other drugs, and they're a facade. I hate, anger, and deceit. Fuck that. You know, but if you're bitter and angry, don't be, don't be, don't be doing acid and ruining it for everybody else. You know, there's people out there who really get something from it. You know, it's a, it's a goddamn shame they outlawed it. It's a, it's a great drug. So, you know, if you if you want to do thirty hits, baby, go get it. Go get that shit. That's, that's it, bro. It's great. Peace and love. Peace and love.